what will happen first? Aram ends or Sherry? Aram or Sherry? Or me recording my review of my fountain pens. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have for you a Mont Blanc one <laughs> Meisterstuck 149. This is from the 90s and has a late uh, early plastic feed. Dude, that's a nice feed. Yes, it supplies feed very well and feeds the ink to the nib quite Die. well. Oh. And up against the Mont Blanc 149 is the Pilot Custom. Is a tournament. Is a tournament between fountains. On the ends. red side, we have the Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc Meisterstuck 149. And on the blue side, we got the Pilot Custom Urushi. Why do you have an accent like that? No one. Do you, do you know casters like that? And uh, both are big fans. Yeah, that should have been. Uh, so, Rick, tell tell me what the advantages right? of the Mont Blanc is coming into this matchup. So you already, we already talked about this in the pre-game lobby, talking about the plastic tip, and uh, please tell me more about it. Right. So the Mont Blanc has a piston mechanism for its ink refilling system, mm -hmm. and it has a higher capacity in comparison to that of the Pilot, which uses and utilizes a cartridge converter system. This cartridge converter system does not have the same amount of ink capacity as that of the Mont Blanc. Right, right. So when you when it comes to the mid to late game, do you would you give Mont Blanc the advantage when it comes to reloading ink? Yes, I'd I'd give the I'd give the advantage overall endurance and longevity of of a uh, of writing capacity towards the Mont Blanc because of this high capacity piston filling mechanism which is able to hold nearly double the amount of that of the pilot custom Yushi. right right so that has the advantage in the longevity in the long run but the pilot it definitely has some qualities of its own that's why it's here playing against mont blanc do you care to tell me about those qualities coming in for the pilot oh gladly and as you said Pilot is not is oh, here for no. a reason, and that is because of its amazing 14 karat. No, sorry, my mistake. 18 karat, bouncy, juicy, fat writing nib. The, the pilot has a nib none other. It it lays mm, down mm. ink like it's never you've never seen that much ink before. It's, it's it's as if someone poured an entire bottle of ink onto your piece of paper. That is a lot of ink. Right, right. It but displays significant amount of shade, shimmer, and sheen. I see. Although many many people would consider that a weakness in their meta game, but you know the pilot takes it to a whole new level and, and in fact turns it into its strength, wouldn't you say? Oh, most definitely. The because of how wet and juicy it writes, oh, the, the smoothness guys. of oh, the nib across Lord. paper is second to none absolutely so i'm sure we have some uh pilot fans and some mont blanc fans in the chat let me let me hear you scream let me type mb win if you're for uh mont blanc <laughs> or pl win if you are for pilot so come on let me see that support in the chat everyone so in this oh, matchup so in the head-to-head -head matchup rick who do you give um uh, the overall win to who do you think would go into this matchup and head to the next round? Ah, man, this is very tough call. I feel like it's a 50-50 possibility. Anything goes between these two giants, behemoths of fountain pens. I see, I see. So it looks like the stage selection has been uh, finished. Looks like they'll be going to the laboratory paper notepad. Who, who do you give the advantage to coming into the map number one? Map, map number one on the Rhodia paper pad, it's definitely going to be to the pilot. You know, the Rhodia has, is a very slippery uh, paper map, and uh, that's where you will see the advantages of the thick rider of the pilot. 
and all the ink characteristics. Wonderful. So we have things to look out for and for the game plan coming into the notepad. Um, what do you think uh, the Mont Blanc should do to survive and get to its advantage to its refilling ink stage? Well, the Mont Blanc has a medium nib in comparison to that of this pilot broad nib. So it will be laying down less ink over time, but also because of its high capacity, it will be in the ring for a longer time in comparison to the pilot who, who will have to hit, who will have to, will need its maintenance crew to refill numerous times throughout this matchup. Right, right. So we're going to come into this game looking for a lot of explosiveness and then a lot of early smoothness coming out of the pilot and a lot of slow paced, methodical writing coming out of the Mont Blanc. All right, Rick, thank you in giving your early predictions for game number one in the set. And we're going to hand it off um, to Rick at the shoutcasting deck. Uh, Rick, take it away. <laughs> it's just the same guy at the same <laughs> desk. Thank you, Neon. Oh, it looks like we're going to be heading into the Summoner's Taper. <laughs> we're loading up right now as we speak. It's, here we go. We see them. We see... Oh, okay. We've loaded into the Summoner's Taper. Okay, they're they're assuming the position, the the tripod tripod grip on the pilot side, and looks like he's using a little modified tripod grip on the Mont Blanc. Very interesting, very interesting positional setup here. Is it? Is this what we usually see coming out of the Mont Blanc going into this uh, early game matchup? You know, this is very a preferential kind of kind of topic. It's it's all about to the user. It's all about the user and the grips and. Um, Whatever, whatever they enjoy, whatever is most comfortable to the user is probably the best, regardless of the pen being utilized. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Going back to the action. Oh my God! There goes the pilot riding absolutely smooth, as as Rick predicted on the analyst desk. No one has ever done that in the history of pilot pens. It's that's the smoothest thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, and this is only the semifinals. Oh no, Rick number one seems like he's uh, foaming in the mouth and just having a complete breakdown. I think I think that it was just too much for him. All right, we're gonna hand it off to Rick number three. Rick number three, are you there at the casting casting desk? How did yes. I die there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's gonna be like one of those time cards. It's like ten, ten minutes later. And that is game number one going over to the pilot pen. And we have to give it up to you, Rick. You know, as one of our longtime analysts here on the desk, you predicted that to perfection. It was on that map on the notepad it was just undeniable that the pilot was just kind of run away with this game yeah as rick rick number one not recovered <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he frothed at the mouth and never came back 